North Yorkshire and the seasons are changing. Summer's giving way to autumn and nature's calendar is turning another page. But as one life cycle comes to an end, the seeds of another are about to be sown. Hidden from sight in this wood near Helmsley is a cave system of national importance for bats and it's about to become the venue for a rarely seen spectacle. This is a Natteras bat, just one of five species that visit the site. Thousands will make the journey over the next few weeks, some travelling up to 60 kilometres to be there. The plan tonight is to film a little known mating ritual known as swarming, but it won't be easy because it'll be completely dark. We're just a short distance from, from Revo Abbey in Rydale near Helmsley. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the woodland basically in a, a spot that's really very hard to find. And there's this Bat Central then. This is Bat Central for this part of the world certainly. We're being helped by Professor John Altrincham, one of the country's leading experts on bat behaviour. He'll help us to catch some of the bats so we can have a closer look. So what's this then, John? This is a harp trap, which is specially designed for catching bats. Is it easy enough to put up? It's easy enough when you know. You can make lots of mistakes. <laughs> it's basically a big rectangular frame with two vertical banks of tight fishing line and it's thin enough that the bats don't pick it up until they're right on the trap and hopefully too late. They hit the wires, slide down into a bag and we just pick them out. But there's a problem. Bats don't like wind and they don't like rain. This is the first dry day for two weeks in a summer that's been appalling. It's a concern that goes beyond our chances of seeing anything tonight. It's potentially very worrying if we get in this kind of summer, this kind of autumn, year in, year out, then it's certainly going to affect the bat's reproductive cycle and there are going to be fewer babies being born, fewer of them getting to survive to reproduce themselves, so it will have an effect on bat populations. We set up night vision cameras and lights with red filters so the bats won't be upset or put off by our presence. Well, the traps are ready and the cameras are set, and all we have to do is wait for the bats. There are 16 species of bats in the UK, five of which visit the caves near Helmsley. Sadly, many are increasingly threatened by man or the environment. We've come to Otley to meet one woman who's dedicated years of her life to rescuing bats. Maggie Brown runs a bat hospital. Each year she responds to hundreds of calls from members of the public. Her aim is to nurse them back to health and then release them into the wild, something rarely achieved before. I've hand reared two groups in the past two years which have been released. So this is still a sort of a new skill that we're learning as bat carers. In the past, baby bats were not generally released because we felt we couldn't teach them the skills to exist in the wild. But in the last two years, we have determined that they can learn instinctively to catch their own food. She's just been given five Natteras bats found in a barn just over the Yorkshire-Lancashire border. It's a place she knows well, having rescued and released bats there in the past. Last year, she met with success, but it came with an emotional wrench terrible anxiety when I released the, these babies partly because it was a novel thing to do and we were you know hoping it would work but got nothing to back us up and partly I suppose like a mother feels well like I as a mother felt when my daughters went off into Leeds on their own for the first time it's you know will they cope after all this hard work but most particularly because you want them to succeed for these baby bats, abandoned on the barn floor, there's now an uphill struggle. Their success and future safety by no means assured. It's now nearly four months since we first met Maggie and her bats, but there's been some bad news. It was devastating and I, I really didn't know what had happened. One, I just found dead in, in the flight tent and didn't know what had happened to it. Out of five orphans, three have died, and the remaining two have lost most of their fur, so can't be released. I have to be careful or I'll burst into tears. It does get you like that. 
you feel that you have done something wrong. Um, and I have to remind myself that two years running, we've been very successful in doing this. The first year we did it, some of them were radio tracked and obviously were surviving. The bats have got these skills, they can do it if you give them the opportunities. That makes up for the fact we've had such a disappointing year. The hope for these two is that come the spring their fur will regrow and they'll be fit enough to release. Back in the wood near Helmsley, we're playing the waiting game with no guarantee that anything will happen. Then the bat detector crackles into life and we have the first sign that bats are about. What's that? So that's one of our first arrivals. Is that so, quite close then? See, it's, yeah, he's within 10 metres, so he's pretty close to the cave entrance and hopefully to the traps. Hopefully they'll, you know, we'll build up to bigger numbers over the next 30 minutes or so. We start to see bats shooting across the clearing and eventually the trap makes its first catch. So what's this? This is a naturalist bat. So this is the species that's most common when, when we uh, come to these sites. Can we tell whether it's male or female? We can. We'll just roll them over. And unlike some mammals, bats are very well endowed. <laughs> and um, there not you go. Shy. Not sure he's a male. Right. Which is what we'd expect. We'd expect 70-80% of the bats to be males at yeah. one of these events. This is an animal with, uh, although it looks odd when you first get it, it's basically the same limb as us. There's its upper arm, there's the forearm there, that's its thumb. Second and third fingers are at the front edge of the wing there, and that's the fourth finger, and that's the fifth finger. And does it actually use those? I mean, this is where it's cr clinging on here. It's, yeah, it uses its thumb for hanging and for hanging onto things and for climbing around and for grooming. The rest of the fingers are completely enclosed in the wing, and they're just for flight. More bats begin to arrive and start chasing each other. This is what they call swarming. What exactly are they doing when they appear to be dogfighting through the air? I think it's males competing with each other, males displaying to females. What they're here for is to mate, and a male needs to advertise his prowess, you know, his physical skills and his, his health to the females, and I think that's probably what it's all about. The bats caught by the trap are weighed, measured and samples taken of their fur before being released. By normal standards, it's not a busy night, but we still get to see quite a few, including some that aren't strangers. Can I hold him? Yeah, certainly. And you just cradle him. You simply um, form a little yeah. trap for him to sit in. And, and try and um, jump out. And, uh, Gosh, you can just feel him. And you can just feel his heartbeat, little heartbeat going. thudding away. Yeah. Absolutely going. Ten to the dozen. And he feels unbelievably fragile as well. But he's not trying to escape. No, they're, they're generally seems, very relaxed about the whole business. Seems quite happy just to sit there. In a normal year, around 6,000 Natteras bats and many more of other species will visit this site to swarm and to mate. It's just hoped this year's poor weather won't have disrupted them too much. Well, it's been an absolute privilege to come here and see these bats in their natural habitat, but as with all things, there comes a time just to let them go.